All Let's right. See. Ben. Yeah. Welcome to, well, welcome you and welcome everybody else on Weekly Roundup, July 16th, 2021. I thought we'd never get here. Six months yeah. in. Yeah. Mid-year review came out today, available yeah. on YouTube, on your YouTube channel. I'm sure we'll send it out as well, maybe this weekend or something like that. Yeah. Maybe you can that. Uh, toss it out there. I will. I will not be able to send it out because uh, I will be at a cottage with no Wi-Fi access. So wow, that's uh, that's different. Yeah, I go for like a poker weekend with the uh, couple friends. Yeah, it'll be weird. <laughs> I don't. I don't play poker that well, so I'm going to lose money. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, nice. I hope the buy-ins aren't too high. Should be fine. Anyway, I digress. I digress. Yep. What's up? what's uh how was the week yeah it was uh, it was volatile week this week actually i think we've reached that stage where we're transitioning obviously i've been talking about that for the last probably six weeks um trying to best position for this this change um and uh you know you're you're always trying to adjust and fine tune and you know this was a week that i think all of the signals really lined up to say that we've arrived at this transition um and uh really we're somewhere between two scenarios right so i've been talking about inflation and growth slowing in the back half of 21 um you know the question now is are both growth and inflation going to slow together? If you get that, that's kind of that deflationary environment. And that uh, through that, that period, really the only asset classes that do well through that typically um, on a back test is US dollars, US treasuries um, and gold. Um, so, you know, that's one scenario. The other one is inflation uh, continuing to go up and growth slowing, which appears what we're in today, which is kind of that quad three that we've talked about a little bit. And so the things that do typically best through through that environment is, you know, tech continues to do well through there. Um, um, and uh, gold and US dollars and treasuries tend to do well in that backdrop. What doesn't do well in either scenarios is small caps. And so what I've been trying to do is lighten up as best possible. And uh, uh, across the board, we had exposure to either the small cap index, which is IWM um, or individual names. So what I did was uh, reduced uh, any exposure to IWM. Some of the small cap names that we own are still exciting, um, still have huge upside. So I've stayed with some of those existing positions. Um, we may add to them as, as things progress, um, but I think that uh, the market and the economy is telling us that you know, growth is slowing. And so as a result of that, you need to prepare for uh, what the next uh, two quarters are gonna look like. Sure, sure. The elusive transition, so we're not getting to that quad four, eh? We're not the elusive quad four, not the elusive transition. The elusive quad four, that seems to be coming. Yeah, so it seems like inflation is going to continue to be elevated a little bit, but the market's already priced in that it's slowing. Um, so, you know, maybe we don't get that continue. I mean, if you see, if you've looked at a lumber chart recently, um, it looks like a giant inverted V, right? Because yeah. you've had lumber crashing. So you can finally put that deck, re refinish that deck. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, yeah, I, did. I was just reading. The, I was just reading about that this morning, actually. So yeah, interesting that it said such a such a crash. Yeah. So some some crypto commodity. and lumber. Who knew? Crypto and lumber. <laughs> you know, some have rolled over. I mean, crypto is. It looks like it's found a pretty good base here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's that's a it's a different scenario. Um, and uh, but yeah, but energy looks like it wants to continue to stay elevated, and they still have year over year comparables that are pretty soft. So you probably get a reasonably high print still in energy, um, and that drives a big big part of that inflation narrative. Um, yeah. but so, you know, I, so I think it's likely we get stagflation for the next quarter, which is, you know, inflation rising and growth slowing. Um, and so trying to best position for that, um, bought some puts a couple of weeks ago, may add to that position if, if markets rally next week, um, and, uh, was, was pretty active this week, um, 
sold uh, U.S. financials, both regionals and, and um, other banks, um, sold Green Thumb, uh, I, uh, uh, I, IYE, uh, ECPG, which is another financial fixed reset preferreds in Canada, as I mentioned, small caps, um, also chose to exit Foot Locker. Um, and um, the other one that I'd been trading, which was FCX, which is Freeport MacBrand, which is copper. Copper looks like it's rolled over. So it switched out of copper earlier this week um, and uh, kind of removed some exposure to the, some, more, some of the more volatile commodities. Then on the buy side, um, added to uh, XLB, which is Canadian long bonds. And as, as I've said, gold, um, I do think gold has uh, probably the perfect setup. If we get that stagflation, gold tends to be one of the best asset classes, if not the best historically. Um, so gold um, and gold miners. Um, the other name, which is a new one this week, which is AT&T. Yeah, boring company, 6% dividend, but it tends to do well in this kind of slowdown period. Um, so bought that, um, added to the end FXY and FXF, which is Swiss franc, Hecla, Cordelin, and Overstock, which is the uh, uh, one of the names that uh, we own in the portfolio, but uh, added to it on, on a bit of a sell-off this week. A busy week. So, yeah, it's a busy week. I mean, yeah. I think yeah, Trading. yeah, lots of activity because I think positioning is quite important right now. Because I think if this market cracks, I think if you watch my our, our semi annual, you'll see that I think there's probably ten to twenty percent potential downside in in equities, and so if it cracks, that's a pretty steep uh, drop. Gotcha. Yeah, I watched, uh, I think you sent me a little Vice documentary on the CEO of Overstock.com, right? Yeah. Like, a, like seven minutes or something like that. Be quite interesting. Yeah. So I YouTube that for sure. What's that guy's name? Do you remember? Uh, I'm blanking on his name right now. Off the top of my head. Yeah. 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 CEO of Overstock.com. I guess we can Google that. But uh, uh, I failed to mention, if you want to ask a question, lots of ways to do it now that we're back uh, on our preferred platform. I'm not going to mention it here. You never know who's listening. Um, so lots of ways that you can ask questions. Uh, there's a Q&A button on the bottom. If you don't see it, just hover your mouse over the bottom. There's like a bar that pops up. The Q&A button, there's a raise your hand if you want to do an audio or video, I think. Um, there's also a chat bubble there. Where, yeah. uh, we watch them all. So just... Uh, choose whatever way we want to do that. Uh, why don't you talk about what's coming up for next week? Um, and then we'll, we'll hit some of the headlines. Yeah, it sounds good. Um, next week is, uh, we're going to see how this plays out. If we get a rally in broad equities, I'll continue to make further adjustments and likely buy some more puts in portfolios. Um, so I think we've, we're kind of in the, the stage where you got to take action and be prepared. So the intention is to continue to watch and wait and see what's happening, but it's clearly market is signaling that growth is slowing um, and central banks are, you know, you know kind of uh, uh, sitting on their hands right now. Um, and so it's wait and watch, see what's happening. But for me, it was, it was really high conviction this week that so we've transitioned uh, you know, and uh, on rallies, I'll take advantage of that uh, to, to reposition the, continue to reposition the portfolio, but feeling pretty optimistic about a lot of the holdings. I mean, Overstock, which we, we've talked about here a couple of times, you know, one of those things that people have talked to kind of question us around to crypto in portfolios, you know, cryptos is a certain asset class, but Overstock has a couple of different arms. You know, their their core business is core retail, uh, similar to a small Amazon, but they were the first to, to start to take uh, crypto within their balance sheet. So they've spun off a couple of different investment arms. One of them is a uh, investment arm that's a uh, owner in Bit, and Bit was one of the the first to launch a central bank digital currency. 
currency. And so Overstock's a shareholder within these central bank digital currencies that are being launched today. So I think it's a really interesting company. Um, that's the market's essentially giving a zero valuation on their participation in central bank digital currency right now. Um, so I think that this thing has the potential to you know, go up four or five times from present levels. And so that's uh, certainly interesting and uh, exciting to pay attention to. When you uncover these things that the market isn't presently pricing in, it's a it's a great opportunity to press them. Was it um, just going back to where we were wondering about the uh, is it Jonathan Johnson is the uh, CEO of Overstock? Yeah, so uh, that's a I well, think he is that... currently, but I don't know if that's that's what it was. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. think it was that guy. Yeah, he was a founder. Yeah, might have been the might have been the uh, the other gentleman that I'm not sure that he's still Patrick Byrne. Yeah, I think that's who it was. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. I can we can send that uh, in in the roundup here. I'll attach it as a link as well. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So. Oh, sorry, and, go ahead. Yeah, no. So I think it was uh, generally, though, on, on the equity side of things, it was a, a quieter week from a raise perspective um, and bonds as well. I mean, BMO did a couple billion dollar offering um, on the, in the bond side, but on equities, super quiet. Uh, market was choppy. It's the summer, so not not a lot of uh, equity issuances and raises. We just had a, a email come in that a Cisco is doing a, a SPAC, a green energy SPAC. So that should be interesting to have a look at in Canada. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but pretty quiet in that space this week. Mm -hmm. uh, Lyle just threw one up. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it say here? What do you think of fractional investing? Recent announcements. <laughs> this service useful question yes uh, go ahead yeah like so an nfts type thing no so well simple launch this week fractional investing so you can buy like a fractional share of yeah. a stock yeah um yeah so yeah i think it's interesting i mean i think that um they're looking at these types of entities are looking to capitalize and continue to try to bring in and attract people in a different format. So, you know, with Amazon trading at a couple thousand dollars a share or Shopify or some of these companies, you know, a lot of people want to be invested in these business, but they can't afford to buy one. Um, so I like that idea from that perspective, because if it gets more people interested in investing in the markets, that's a positive. Um, sure. I think, uh, I think it's reasonable. It's a, uh, certainly something that you'd have to change your thinking to some extent. But then when you look at people that invest in Bitcoin or any type of crypto today, you know, you'll, you'll own like 0.25% of a, of an Ethereum or, you know, 0.5% of a Bitcoin. Um, so, you know, I think that's logical evolution of uh, this kind of investing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's run, uh, you got anything else before we run across some of these headlines? No, I think that's it for me. Let's let's start with the Twitter. Super interesting news coming out of Twitter. Uh, I'll let you kind of explain what they're working on right now. It's super, we find it super exciting. Yeah, so Jack Dorsey has been kind of yeah, putting out information recently talking about, so Jack Dorsey is the CEO of Square and Twitter. Um, so they've been talking about uh, some digital finance. And so they've been teasing out some different ideas around how they're going to build this and potentially implement something like this. And so last night he put out that they're going to build a platform, decentralized platform with Bitcoin as the backing. And so super interesting that they're putting their attention towards this. Um, I think it's a, you know, Recently, there's been a lot of attention moving to, to Ethereum and some of the other cryptos, but uh, Jack and his team have really put put the stake in the ground saying we're going to build something with, with Bitcoin as the backbone. So 
I mean, early days, but interesting to pay attention to. Um, somebody messaged them. I read a lot of the com conversations that went through, and they, you know, people asked like, "How do we participate in this?" And I mean, the best way to participate would be through Square, because Square is going to be kind of the the main shareholder and the main backer of this initiative. So, be important to see how this evolves. Yeah, for sure. Uh, some more general news. The Dow drops 300 points on Friday, snaps three-week winning streak. Yeah, like, like, like I say, it was we're, we're starting to see this a bit of cracks there in the uh, in the, this equity move, and so you know the Dow has actually been sucking a lot of kind of a smaller cap money into it up until recently here today and yesterday you started to see a little bit of pressure in the bigger cap companies um and you know obviously re reading over the weekend will continue to give me more insights around what happened within the the internal cogs of the market but yeah we see uh, we see it snap the their losing streak and uh, i think there's probably more to come on that on the downside what about uh, the mystifying bond market behavior <laughs> that could last all summer? <laughs> Is that what the headline says? I'm just reading headlines. Man. <laughs> hey, I'm your color guy. Yeah. So the look, I mean, it's interesting. Like, uh, I, you know, some of these guys I follow pretty closely and yeah, a lot of them have said in the last couple of weeks, well, I don't understand why the bond market has gone down. Um, and, and, and as I mentioned over the last couple of months, my, my, my view and the economic view anyways, is that the economy is slowing and the bond market tends to lead equities. And so the bond market has sold off and maybe it'll be different this time. Uh, but it, it typically what happens is the bond market sells off. Oh, sorry, the bond market rallies uh, before equities sell off. And so the bond markets rallied. And, and now I think we're in kind of a new range. We went up to that 176, which got overextended. Um, and then, you know, we saw yields start to come back down as bonds went up. And now we're seeing the equities start to say, okay, well, maybe we agree with the bond market. And so, you know, we're, we're at that kind of 1.3 on the US 10 year. You know, we may creep back up. Like if we see equities rally, we maybe go up into the 140s on the 10 year, and that'd be a great signal for me to, to add more. Um, but I think it's the bond market saying, listen, the economy is slowing people. Let's pay attention. Yeah, yeah. Well, and before we, um, before we got on here, we were just talking about that it was earnings seasons. Or is it earnings season, right? So earnings last one here that I have for your earnings could be the biggest driver for markets in the week ahead as investors watch bonds. So kind of related. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know, I think that uh, earnings aren't going to make a huge difference this time. Um, if the, the last couple of quarters, obviously there've been massive earnings beats. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like earnings. Well, we're early into the season, like earning, <clears throat> excuse me, earnings growth is up like 368%, I think, mm -hmm. S&P earnings growth. Um, the market doesn't care today. So, no. you know, that's the biggest number we'll probably ever see in our history. Uh, but yeah, markets care about what's happening in front of us, not what already happened. Sure. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, it'll be important to watch, but there's going to be one-offs, I think. You know, unless you blast away your numbers, there's, there's more downside risk in there, than there is upside. Um, oh. So I would say that's, uh, that's how I'd be looking at earnings season. Okay. All right. That's all we got on the list. You got anything else you want to talk about? Busy week? Uh, Busy week, no. I mean, the only other thing is, uh, is the U.S. dollar. So, U.S. Uh, in Canada, U.S. dollars been moving in favor, in our favor this week. So, so that's a positive. Nice to see. Um, I think there's more to come on that side, particularly when oil starts to break down, which isn't immediate, but it's coming. Right. Uh, last call for any questions anybody has. Oh, Lyle's got one. He's got the hand up. So let's allow him to talk here. All right, you're good to go, Lyle. I think you have to, oh, there you go, you got it. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. All right, uh, this is a longer question and I, I wanna take time to type out, so that's why I did the rate lower hand, a raise hand. 
Anyway, well, it's a kind of government uh, ideology policy question, but does affect the direction of the economy and markets. So I read an interesting article that points out the conflict between a hot economy and the stated intent of, of this liberal government to address uh, economic inequities, making the point that while the main asset class is equities, bonds, and real estate, are in inflated bubbles, thereby increasing the net worth of multitudes of Canadians. At the same time, it's massively increasing the uh, gap in inequities yeah. um, between especially those classes that don't have asset, access to those assets. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and that inequity was borne out most dramatically in, during the pandemic and the impact um, on those that were in the uh, pandemic. So. The government has stated in multiple ways that they wish um, seriously to address those inequities. So I, it, it seems like there's a conflict here. To address those inequities would be to try to cool those asset classes. But to do that is going to run against the intent to reveal a buoyant economy in, in light of uh, a forthcoming election. Yeah. So, um, what what possibly can not that you know what the liberals are thinking, but what could a government do to address both of those? And uh, I think they're kind of trapped. Yeah, it's a great question. I think that uh, you know this is something that um, obviously has been widening for the last couple of decades um, as uh, income uh, average income hasn't kept up. Um, so I think they're trapped. I think that a lot of uh, governments in the world are in the same position. You know, Canada is a bit better off in the U.S. because average income in Canada has risen, where it's been a flat line in the U.S. for 15 years. Um, so what are their likely courses of action? Unfortunately, uh, they're likely um, tax related. Um, so uh, you know, I'd be surprised if we didn't see changes to tax on capital gains, potentially estate taxes. Uh, you know, I think if they, they truly want to, we'll say, for lack of a better term, Robin Hood style and take from the rich and give to the poor, you know, in order to do that, it results in kind of a taxation if they don't want to slow things down, as, as you comment on. So, you know, I think that, uh, that, that the easiest course of action would be taxation related. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, anything else, Ben? No, I think that's it. I uh, hope everyone has a great weekend. It looks like yeah. it's going to be nice. Yep. Hopefully uh, you can get out there on the slip and slide with your kids and uh, have a blast. Like it's going to be nice. Yeah, it should have be. Have a good week. Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you next week. Hey, sounds good. Take care.